This one has been long awaited on the channel. Finally, I've delivered. I think I was practicing. Or not practicing. I don't need to practice. I got this shit down. But I've been promising this review since like January. So here we go. WWF Monday Night Raw, November the 4th, 1996. Also known as the Pillman's Got a Gun episode. <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, This is the era when the intro of every show had the 50 years of sports entertainment. And it's like, okay, this is 96. The WWF was like 63. Wasn't that their first event? So how was that 50 years? Like, that didn't make sense to me. The WWF started in the 60s. So how could they be 50 years of sports and entertainment? Like, like I... I I, I think before it was called WWF, wasn't it called like Capital Wrestling? But they never, I believe that's the name, but they never mentioned that. It's always been WWWF or WWF. So I never understood that intro always, it made no sense. Anyway, the show starts with Austin beating up some production people's ass, you know, the usual. Then uh, Kevin Kelly stinking ass is in Pillman's quote unquote mansion. Um, you have uh, Vince McMahon and Jerry Lawler on commentary. Um, you know, they highlight Shawn Michaels and Sid's quarrel, their build up to the Survivor Series 96 in the garden. Um, you know, Vince McMahon, can they get along? And then Lawler's like, are the Jets going to the Super Bowl? Which is hysterical because in 96, no. And even this year with Aaron Rodgers and his black thong, the Jets are still not going to the, <laughs> to the Super Bowl. I almost choked. Almost again. I almost choked twice on Aaron Rodgers' thong. Um, oh, God. 51 seconds into this show with just video packages is better than the last 20 years of wrestling. We get the Raw intro. I never cared for this intro in 96. Like This was like the intro, I think. I think this was the intro for like... What? What? What was the first Raw intro? I don't even remember. But I always hated the ones like... I always hated that intro. You know, I like when they got to like 97, the All Together Now. But I I never liked this Raw intro, the the early one from the 90s. I never did. Um, Kevin Kelly and that annoying Raw siren... Oh, my God. Raw used to have, like, this fucking siren playing. I, I hated that. And, you know, Kevin Kelly's outside Pillman's home. You know, Kevin Kelly, he's dressed like an elder at the Kingdom Hall. Then uh, we go to the arena. I'm sure I'm sure this show was taped. But uh, Gold Dust appears. You know, this is like the prime of that fruity gimmick. You know, you see Marlena and her hard implants. A most unusual pair. Now, I don't know if that's Marlena's implants or Goldust and Marlena. Uh, he faces Barry Windham with his horrible stalker gimmick. Oh, my God. Horrible stalker gimmick. Barry Windham, you, you talk, I mean, this might be a video. The, the, the greatest downfalls of a wrestler's career, Barry Windham, where he was in the 80s, the horsemen, the matches, you know, th didn't he have like a series with Flair or something? Or, or Dusty, or one of them, one of them fucks, it's like, you, you look at Barry Windham in like 88, and then look at him in 96, it's like, what the fuck, Rocky Maivia, he's on his way to debut, you know, I, I never understood this, they kept hyping like Survivor Series, like The Rock's debut, but he was on Raw, so I guess it was his in-ring debut, Cause he was he he was on Raw for weeks. He was on like um, I think he was even on uh, li uh Live Wire. I think so. I don't know. Maybe it was his first match, but he was on Raw. He was ringside during this match. Uh, Mister Perfect is ringside. This is uh you know, you know he's shortly about to depart to WCW. Uh, the Stalker Barry Windham. He's dressed like a Dudley boy. He 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 looks like he looks like a six foot six Spike Dudley. 
Like, oh my god. Oh my god. Th th this gimmick, the stalker. W where did McMahon get this from? Oh, oh, Jesus Christ. Goldust, in this era with his gear, he always had a goddamn wedgie. That I, I, that just plays into his gimmick. Pause. This whole gimmick is a pause. Then the bigot drunk P.S. Michael Hendricks, Doc Hayes is shown, whatever. I miss the 90s. Not not for Mike Hendricks or Mark Hendricks or Doc Hayes Hendricks, whatever that is, but I just miss the 90s. You know, I never liked that WWF logo, the one that, like the, the yellow and blue logo where like it was like crooked looking, like the logo is on top of a square, but it's crooked. I hated that logo. Um, Austin is calling from a car phone on the way to Pillman's home. He's like OJ charging down the highway. <laughs> I got a sick, I got a six pack of whoop ass riding with me, son. <laughs> he said, I got a six pack of whoop ass riding shotgun with me on the way to Pillman's house. <laughs> Austin is gold. Austin was gold in 96. Austin was great in 92, 93 WCW. They just never used him right. Austin was always great. He was like literally always great. Um, WWF was very low budget at this time. They were made. They had budget cuts, you know, at Titan Tower, their production, you know, it just the lighting. They used to like, you know, a lot of the building, the building was like dark to cover up the empty seats and the nosebleeds and top of the arena. The production, this is 96, the production still looked like it was the 80s. Just, it was terrible. You watch this and then watch Nitro the same night. Like, Nitro is, like, bright and, like, pyro and exciting and it's, it's moving. Like, this show was so slow, boring. It was so 1980s and it's 96. I know Russo was, like, going crazy just, oh, my God, this shit sucks. Um... You know, at this time they're doing poor houses. The house shows is just not is just. Uh, you know, this is a time when they had to. You know, they were going overseas and it was still miserable. But this was a horrible time in the WWF for business for many things. Um, not to mention they're getting demolished. Just trampled, crushed, whooped, spanked. By Turner, by Nitro. The NWO is blazing hot. This is November 96. NWO is blazing hot on the Turner Networks. Um, but anyway, this match is happening. You know, they're doing Austin's on the phone talking to McMahon while this match is happening. That shows you how much they care. Marlena's puffing on that cigar like Suge at the Source Awards. Goldust, I think he like did some like fruity tongue kissing on Barry Windham. Like what the fuck? I mean, at this point, Barry Windham is just a worthless loser, bum, mid card piece of shit. But um, anyway, they they cut to a uh, a commercial and then they come back. They air the great Steve Austin black and white Survivor Series promo where he's running down Bret Hart. He's running down Hitman. If you put S in front of Hitman. You get my exact opinion of him. <laughs> this Goldust Stalker match, which was trash, it ends in a double DQ. I don't give a damn. You know, this show is heavily building up to Survivor Series and the Austin Pillman impending confrontation. This match and the segment, everything was just too long. Um, it's like just watching this match, it's like, who cares? Get to Austin, damn it. Um, they show Pillman with his broad, Melanie Pillman. <laughs> this, I think she passed away a few years ago. Um, you know, then they go to back to the drunk Doc Hendricks. They show a clip of Undertaker and Mankind. You know, some some segment that happened. Then Pillman. They get back to Pillman and he drops the infamous Austin 316 meets Pillman 9mm. Oh my god. That that line was incredible. He pulls out this gun. Pillman got the crazy eyes. <laughs> oh my god. Uh later on later well later, Austin arrives to beat up a couple of future XFL prospects in Pillman's garage area. You know, another thing I hated at this time, I hated that stupid 
Milton Bradley karate fighters shit. Oh, I hated these. I hated these segments. They were so pointless. And this one, they and and they did this marketing like this was a sponsor for WWF for like two three years. Oh, I hated this shit. I think they they got out of it in like ninety eight around Royal Rumble. Ugh, I hated Milton Bradley. Ugh. Um, and on this segment they had Marlena and Sid playing with toys. Pause. Then you get Rikishi is the Sultan. They, they he had so many he has so many chances in this company. He has so many gimmicks. It's it's just ridiculous. It's like. If you like big and rotund, McMahon will give you 20 years to figure it out. Mark Henry and Rikishi, everyone else got fired, quit, left, died. But Rikishi and Mark Henry just got endless chance after chance after chance. And when they figured it out, it only lasted two, three years for each of them. So Rikishi is the sultan. And he's with the great Bob Backlund and Sheiky Baby. Fuck Jeff Jarrett. America, oh my god, oh Iron Sheik, man, oh my god, fuck Jeff Jarrett, oh my god, love, love, love the Iron Sheik, the racist, drunk, alcoholic, fuck him, but um, love him, but fuck him, um, the Sultan is facing some jobber, who cares, Austin enters Pillman's house, Pillman aims the gun, and then they go to a, a, a fuzzy black screen, like the power got cut, uh, the rest of this show was like McMahon and Lawler doing like the sad Owen Hart just died voice, the the Owen Hart just fell voice. Someone just got critically injured voice. You know they're interviewing uh Kerwin selfies. They're interviewing people on the phone of what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we have Jr. He interviews Shawn Michaels and Sid. I never liked, I mean, this, this just, uh, just, there's so much stuff I do not like. Um, this, this is 96, but this is still the dead era of WWF 93 to 96. You know, to me, 93 to the summer of 97 to me, WWF did not pick up until around SummerSlam 97. Um, so this is the dead era to me, 93 to about July, 97 is like the dead era of WWF. Um, but I, I hate it. You know, this is 96. This is when Shawn Michaels finally gets his main event push. And uh, he spirals out of control. Good Lord. Uh, that's that's another video I got to make. The down the downfall of Shawn Michaels. Um, but I hate it when they put Jose Lothario. It's like, Why? Why? I know why. McMahon thought, you know, when, when Shawn Michaels was finally going to be a babyface and get his push for the world belt, McMahon was like, you know, we got to, you know, you have to win the Royal Rumble at number one. And you, you have to, you know, you're going to beat the top guy, Brad. And, you know, you have to have, you know, the, the biggest baby face. So let's get your old coach who trained you in your corner and let's do the Rocky story and all this shit. Oh, God. Jose Lothario, he just stuck out in not a good way. He was not needed. He did not fit. But McMahon, like I said, he wanted this. You know, the old, you know, baby face with his older mentor in his corner. It, this added nothing. Um, So Shawn Michaels and Sid have this, like, podium debate or some shit. It's funny because uh, Sid screams, bullshit. This is bullshit, which is funny. 80s uh 80s wrestlers cussing is always funny. Um did I mention Iron Sheik? They they have some pull apart. I mean it was like this, Shawn Michaels he had to be drugged up in the segment. He looked like he didn't care. This 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 segment did nothing. It was boring. Um It was a, they had like the most meaningless pull apart, you know, Pat Patterson and Agents run in. Uh, they're building up to a tag match the next week. And, you know, Survivor Series in the Garden where Shawn Michaels got booed in the Garden. They cheered Sid. Um, I really do like that main event, Sid and Shawn Michaels at uh, Survivor Series 96. I really like I really like that, that match and that main event. You know, uh, I love Sid. Sid has the worst punches ever in wrestling, but I love Sid. <laughs> oh, God. Sid was a, a physical specimen, but he was not a good athlete. 
But he's he, he's a legend. He was a, Sid is one of the best promos ever. He never gets that credit. You know, they love to make fun of the one where he's like, uh, can we start over? We're live, pal. Like, or or um the one in WCW where he's like, I have half the brains you have. But you know, other than that, Sid has great interviews, especially in in uh ninety seven, ninety six, ninety seven. He has great interviews. Um, very, Sid is very intelligent. Um. And he kept that mullet to this day. It's like, Jesus Christ, who else on earth still maintains a mullet? His hair looked like, you know, the the chicken uh, oodles and noodles. But if you put, like, more turmeric in it, oh, God. So, anywho, Mark Miro, he faces the fake Razor Ramon. And and Kane is the fake Diesel on the outside. Who, Who gives a shit? Lawler McMahon still doing the sad voice as if Pillman killed Austin. Um, and, and, you know, at this point, this is November 4th, 96. If you just think it's like, wow, Pillman will be dead in 11 months. It's like, (sighs) Pillman has less than a year to live. You know, uh, this was, it was fascinating that dark side of the ring episode of Brian Pillman part two, uh, two part series rather. That was tremendous. Oh my God. Um, you know, then they go back to Pillman's house. Pillman's having a pull apart at his house, and then somehow he gets the gun, and he's waving the gun, and then the show goes off the air. Um, you know, this episode of Raw sucked. This is still in the dead era. You know, the 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 best part of the show was Austin Pillman. It's like an iconic, infamous moment, but the rest of the show was terrible. But even though this show was not good. This episode is still miles better. This is years better than anything AEW does and current WWE by far. This is still better. This show was not good, but it was still better than current wrestling. Um, Also, like I said, this is known as the Pillman has a gun. Pillman's got a gun episode. This was definitely, obviously, a ratings ploy by, by Vince McMahon. He was very desperate. He was getting murdered in the ratings. He was getting murdered in merchandise, house shows, what have you. Um, or WCW was about to take over in house shows if they hadn't yet. But um, they were getting destroyed in the ratings. I mean, it was embarrassing how bad the WWF's ratings were next to WCW. Um, this episode, The Gun, this was McMahon so desperate for any type of attention, anything. And this actually did not work. This show did a lower rating than the previous week, I believe. This show did not help them in the ratings. They actually died worse in the ratings to Nitro, I believe, in this night than they had in, like, the previous week or whatever. Like, this show did nothing. And also, USA Network hated this episode. The executives, they were furious with McMahon. McMahon, I believe, he had to put out a statement not apologizing to... Because there there were people who were offended. Like, this is a time when... People would write to newspapers and write to the networks. How could you put this on TV and all this shit? So McMahon, he had to like put out a statement saying this is entertainment. and Because people were offended that they would bring out a gun on a wrestling show. And USA hated this episode. And um, now, two years later, Austin has the fake toy gun where he, he shoots it at Austin and, and it says Bang 316. But uh, I don't even, I don't think USA like that either. But, you know, they hated this episode. But Bischoff was killing McMahon. D- WWF was dying in the war at this point. And uh, it's just getting started. This is late 96. The ass whooping has just begun. Monday Night Wars is only, what, two, three months in. So two months in. So um, not, not two months in. What am I saying? The Monday Night Wars is about a year a year in, and uh, yeah, from 95, so this is, yeah, so the ass whooping is just beginning, pretty much, but uh, that was this episode, um, this episode, like I said, Austin Pillman, that's the only thing worth watching, but that was, a, that was at the beginning of the show, so when that's done, turn this show off, the, the end where, like, Pillman is, like, having a pull apart, and people's trying to restrain him, and then he pulls the gun back out, that looked, like, so, like, amateurish and goofy, like, he has the gun, but then he's kind of looking in the camera, but trying not to, 
Like, I don't know, but um, this this was not a good episode of Raw, but it's way better than today's wrestling. I watched this shit wait, before I watched AEW or Impact, no Impact, or any of, any of this other bullshit. But with that said, like, share, comment, subscribe. If you have a request, if you want a certain Raw, certain wrestling reviewed, ranted on, if you have a certain topic, hit the Cash App, uh, donate to the Cash App, and let me know what you want. Uh, that is it.